We have a Premiere Pro update. We have some new tech styling options in the Essential Graphics panel, new labels, new improved markers, faster text-based editing, and much more. Plus, we're gonna take a look at the future of what Premiere Pro 2025 might look like. All right, without further ado, let's jump on in. So I think the best update for 24.3 is the new improved tech styling presets. In the old version, you didn't have a dropdown that would save the presets locally. So every time you created some new captioning styles, you'd have to import them into your project panel and they wouldn't exist in the dropdown when you would create your captions. So for example, here I'm inside of 24.3. If we go to window and we go to text panel, right now you can see underneath the transcript tab, that this short video that we have here has already been transcribed. Now, if you don't see a transcription, remember you can always go to Premiere Pro settings, go to your transcription settings, and here you can make sure to automatically transcribe clips. And I recommend only the clips in the sequence. So we have our transcript. Now we can go to captions and there's nothing. <laughs> So now what we can do is we can go over here to this ellipsis and create captions from this transcript. Now this is all familiar here. You can see that we can adjust the character length, which I want to do so that way they're a little bit smaller. Let's do about two seconds for the minimum duration and let's do single lines because that's kind of the style that I like. The style dropdown has been here before, but if you didn't have any style presets, this would appear empty. But now I have a few presets that I've created and you can see the drop down here, but that's not the update. We have our subtitle track here and you can see that if I move my playhead, oh, that's a wonderful still. This caption here, if I zoom into the timeline, this automatically one, we can stylize this with our essential graphics panel. What's really cool is you have a track style drop down here. So you can see I've added a couple styles, but let me show you how to make your own style. And by the way, if you want the styles that I've created, I've made them available to my patrons. You'll find a link just down below where you can go get those and import them. So let's stylize this caption here. First of all, let's move the position up so it's not cut off by our social media UI. And if you're interested in the safe zones for social media UI, I did make a moker that you can overlay on your timeline. You can check out this other video that I made where I go into depth on how all of that works. So now let's choose a cool font. I'm going to go from my drop down and make sure that I'm showing the fonts that I've installed from Adobe Fonts because that way it just stays synced with my Adobe Creative Cloud. All right, let's try a more fun style. Let's use this black bubble font and let's also add a background. Let's make this kind of a poppy, maybe like a, a bright green background. So if we like this and we're like, this is awesome, let's go ahead and let's save this. Click the plus icon, create style. Now you have the option to save it to project and save to local styles. So in this case, we're going to do both and let's just call it bubble green. The style was saved over here in our project panel. And now when we move all of the other captions have this style in our captioning track. So every single little text file has been updated. And now it appears in our dropdown here, which is just great. But in order for it to appear here, you need to make sure that it's saved here inside of our project. So you can see that I created a styles bin. You can just create a new bin and I put all of my styles in here for it to appear here. If you click on open style browser, you can see that you have local styles and you can also open the project styles. If you ever start a new project and you want these styles to appear in the dropdown, you can just take that style and import it here into your project panel because it needs to be inside the project panel for it to appear in this dropdown. So there are a few things that I wish that can be improved here. One, I wish that it would just always appear here. Why can't this be the local save place for them, right? But on the other hand, that list can get quite long. So you can always go to your style browser and add these into your project panel for the styles that you wanna work on for that particular project. I also wish that there was animation that we could add. Of course, there are some workarounds. For example, you can select all of your captions, you can go to graphics and titles, and you can upgrade caption to graphics so you can add different pops and transitions to the captions, but that's still very manual. People 
don't want to rely on plugins. They don't want to go to CapCut. They don't want to go to these mobile apps just to add animation to their captions. If you're fine with static captions, which I totally am, because it's easier to read on one hand, you can use this workflow and have really nice stylized captions now inside of Premiere Pro. Oh, 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 by the way, these styles translate over to regular graphics too. For example, I have this text here called the smallest mic I've ever used. If I click on this, I can also use those styles I created for the captions. So if I wanted this to be purple, it will change automatically for me, but I can always go back to that style that we had before. So the next update is shared labeled presets. So every single clip you can assign a label to, right? A different label color. Before this update, you could change the label colors, of course, but you couldn't import any saved layouts or share them with team members. So you could all have a consistent look. But now when we go up to Premiere Pro, settings, labels, now from our preferences down at the bottom, we have these different presets. And you can also save your presets or you can import different presets that maybe a team member has sent you. But let's go and let's change this to editorial and look how it changes the layout. So now the different colors correlate to the type of media, which is a very, very common way of working that you just maybe didn't know about with the default layout that we had before. So let's go ahead and press OK and look at how all the colors change. So this might be a good way for you to work and you can now share your custom labels with your team. And by the way, I'm Kelsey. If you're new to Premiere Gal, I post video editing tutorials weekly. I share updates to new tools. So if you want to keep up to date with everything in post-production, my friend, you are in the right place. And talking about sharing label colors with our team, this is a perfect introduction to our sponsor today, Lucidlink. So my team and I recently switched from sharing files using Dropbox to Lucidlink because it's faster. Now our editing team is spread all over the globe. I have an editor in Thailand. I have an editor in LA. I have a new editor that I just set up in Kansas City and I'm able to seamlessly share all the project files and footage and they can start to see it instantaneously. Unlike Dropbox, which requires me to upload and download, Lucidlink lets them stream the footage right away. But of course you can pin it to the local cache so you can edit locally from those files without even having to download it. I set up a file space for our team and basically it mounts to my computer like a local remote drive. And so inside of the file space, I made a folder for our recurring assets. I also made a users folder and each editor has their own unique folder where I assign projects to them. Everything will automatically connect because it's that same file path from the drive, which is just super useful. And inside of Premiere Pro, you can download the free Lucidlink panel. And what's really cool is that you can choose to pin the footage that is just in the timeline. If you're interested in trying out Lucid for your workflow to see you know, how it works compared to what you're using right now, you can sign up for a free two week trial, no credit card needed. Let me know how it goes. It's definitely improved our workflow and it definitely feels like we're living in the future. And I definitely recommend you watch the full video that we made that kind of walks through the whole process. So thank you so much to Lucid for sponsoring today's video. Now let's jump back into the updates. Next up is a 15% increase in the speed of speech to text. I have a new project open here. Let me import a file and put it into a sequence to show you how quickly it transcribes. So when I imported this, it started to transcribe right away. This is a three minute clip and it's already done transcribing from our text panel. Like I didn't even have time to go up and check our status here to see what what happened. It, it finished it already. I didn't even get to compare it. Remember, I said it in a previous video, you can always download your language packs. So inside of your W Creative Cloud desktop app, you can see here I have version 24.3. If I click on these three dots and I go to get add-ons. Here you can go into the speech to text languages 
and you can see that I've added all of these languages. If I wanted to add Korean, for example, I can just click add so that way it's downloaded locally and I don't need to be connected to the internet if I ever need to transcribe, do speech to text. One thing that is improved now is improved markers. If you didn't know yet, for example, this music track, I select it and I press M, you can see that a little marker was left here. If I double click on this, you can see the marker here in the source panel, which displays that audio. If I double click on that, I can leave a note on here. I can just call this music and let's say, let's increase the music track. And you can also give it a different color if you want. So now that I have a few markers in my timeline, if I go to window and go to the markers, Panel. You can see here that we have all of our markers listed out here with the notes that I left. Now this might be useful if you're working with editors and you want them to take a look at your markers panel. And now if you click on this, you can show all the markers, which includes the sequence and the clip markers, or you can just show sequence markers only, or just show clip markers. And you can just add notes here directly in the markers panel. And when you click on this, it'll take you to that specific marker in the timeline. So this is a very useful way to work, especially if you're sharing sequences with other people or if you just need to leave notes for yourself. For me, I use it more as like internal notes, whether it's sharing with my editor or just something that I need to do in the timeline. It would be nice if there was like a checkbox next to this. I also wish that I could delete markers from the markers panel. As of now, I can go to that marker by double clicking on it and then pressing delete, but that's just like a lot of extra steps. So those are just a couple notes that I think would improve markers. I'd love to know what you guys think about markers and how you use them and what you would like to see. I know that Adobe's watching this video, so anything that you leave in a comment below, I'm sure will be useful. And as promised, a future look at what Adobe Premiere Pro 2025 will look like. As you know, there's the Adobe Premiere Pro beta. If you have an Adobe Creative Cloud plan, you can go and check out that beta and see what features they're working on. For example, right now they're working on a new color space in the timeline and new audio fading. I highly encourage you to go check out the video that I made about this future look at audio fading and how it can be applied to your workflow and open up the beta and start testing it. That's why it's there. So I really hope that this video was useful to you. Thanks again to our friends over at LucidLink for sponsoring the video and making an awesome way for me and my team to collaborate. Once again, that link is just down in the description. So as always, keep creating better video with Gal. See you next time. Bye. Ooh.